What is up, guys? My name is Caleb, and welcome to the very first episode of the series that we are entitling Questions with Caleb. And in case that title wasn't clear enough, this is the show where I answer your questions and give you my thoughts on all of the things that you guys want to discuss. This is kind of an offshoot of our Two Minute Tuesday, the show where I answer your questions in two minutes or less, but so many of you guys were asking absolutely incredible questions that just deserved a longer and higher quality answer than what I could fit in two minutes or less. And so that's why we started this show, also to be able to discuss some topics that weren't necessarily related to uh, current events, but maybe were a little bit more based in philosophy or evergreen issues in general. So let's go ahead and jump right in with our very first question. It comes from Sean. He asks, why do you think so many people are suddenly promoting socialism? And how do we begin to reverse the narrative so that people can think freely and see the dangers of it? Well, first off, Sean, thank you so much for the incredible question. If there's anyone else that would like their question to be answered, make sure to put it down in the comment section down below or hit us up on uh, Facebook or Instagram. But to answer your first part of the question, it's gonna come in a couple of sections, uh, so let's break this up. So to the question, why are people talking about socialism? I don't think uh, necessarily everyone is talking about socialism, but there is a lot of people talking about it. And I think it's specifically younger people. And I think this generation is in a unique position to be more vulnerable to uh, socialist ideas than any before. And let me explain a little bit of what I mean. So a lot of younger people during the crash of 2008 saw their parents lose their house, their car, their retirement, and go into financial ruin. And I think when you go through that experience, you become kind of uh, hostile to a lot of the capitalistic ideas that were so prominent during that time. And instead of thinking about, oh, how can I get the next Ferrari, this generation is thinking about how they can make the biggest social impact. And you can even see that in how success is being defined. It used to be that a CEO would brag about his watch or his house or these kinds of things to show success. And now to prove that a company is doing uh, incredible things, they brag about how many trees they planted in the Amazon or the quality of the insurance that they offer to all of their employees. And so this has kind of bled across the board to this new group of people that are just now able to vote and kind of voice their opinions about uh, the issues of social politics. They're also in a unique position because they have more debt than ever before. You know, when you have $50,000 to pay back to some school for an education that didn't necessarily get you a job, it is hard to feel as if the system is working. And so when socialism comes along and says, hey, we're gonna make sure that there's a safety net that make sure uh, that your parents are never in that position again, as they get older, you're never in the same position that they were in during the 2008 crash. Not only that, but we're gonna pay back your student loans and your kids won't have to pay to go, go to a state school. That is an offer that most people simply cannot refuse. There is a, a popular quote that says, once people realize that they can vote themselves money, that is when democracy dies. And that's absolutely true because there will always be more people that feel disenfranchised in life than the people that feel like they're winning. So when you give them an opportunity to have a system of government or philosophy that, that brings that money down from the top and, and bleeds it to the people that feel as if they deserve it and need it more than those that already have it, you are always going to have this complication. And lastly, while it may sound like I'm kind of bashing millennials, I'm not because of this last point. They are in this position mostly because of the way that they were parented. You know, we gave them participation trophies. We told them that it didn't matter how you played the game, it was just the fact that you tried. And while that doesn't seem like a big deal to a kid in sports, when you're talking about economics, when you just discuss the issue of, oh, everyone should get a participation trophy, it now becomes everyone should have a universal income. No one should have to work more than one job to be able to make ends meet. And all of a sudden, you are talking about robbing the rich to give to the poor, which if you are one of the poor, doesn't sound so bad. Now to answer the second part of your question, how do we combat this narrative? Well, I think it's by sharing stories like LeBron James. In case you hadn't seen uh, the news recently, LeBron James is opening his own school for inner city kids. It's free tuition, free transportation, free lunches, free books, all of these things. And that is kind of a socialist uh, idea in philosophy uh, of a free school where you aren't paying all these things, there's no taxes involved, but it all came about because of a capitalistic system. And I think if you show young people the power of uh, capitalism creating millionaires and millionaires pouring back into their community, I think they'll be far more interested in what we have to say about this issue because we have to show them that capitalism can breed 
empathy. And that just because business can be cutthroat doesn't mean that the businessman has to be all the time, that they can be generous, they can care about those that are in worse positions than they are. And I think that's how you combat that narrative is by uh, giving them a real life narrative, one that they can see, one that they can touch and experience like the story with LeBron James where people who have succeeded in the capitalistic model are now giving back and loving on people in a greater way than ever before. And as you explain to them, you know, that it takes $3 for the government to give uh, $1 away, I think they will begin to see that it is easier for private charities and private individuals to meet the needs of the people around them than it is for the government in the same position. Well, that's all that we have for you today. If, again, you're wanting to submit a question, make sure to, to put that in the comment section down below. But until next week, we love you guys very much. Bye-bye.